Hello viewers, welcome to this video lecture series on analysis and design of algorithms. This session I shall give you the introduction to the greedy approach and minimum spanning tree. Now this particular topic why it is required is for the next few sessions which you are learning under the greedy approach. The, there are three algorithms, uh, the Prim's algorithm, Kruskal's algorithm and Dijkstra's algorithm. All these three algorithms makes use of the greedy approach. So here whatever I am going to teach in the next sessions about these three algorithms but before that you should be knowing what is greedy approach and since the Prim's algorithm and Kruskal's algorithm is used to determine the minimum spanning tree so you should be having the information about what is a spanning tree what is a minimum spanning tree so this information I shall be conveying you in this session so first thing is about the greedy approach so we say these algorithms are making use of the greedy approach what exactly you mean by greedy approach Greedy approach is used to solve an optimization problem. So we say that we are going to come out with an optimal solution. So these kind of problems we call it as optimization problems and greedy approaches are used to solve these optimization problems. What are actually optimization problems? Normally optimization problems always demands a minimum value or the maximum value. So suppose if there is an algorithm to find the shortest path, we are trying to find the minimum cost. And if you want to carry out uh, the knapsack problem, we want to find out the maximum profit. So minimum, maximum, uh, wherever such kind of requirement is there, then we have to make use of this greedy approach. So I'll just give you here a couple of examples to make you understand the greedy method, the greedy approach. Suppose if there is a problem to buy a property, the word property is used here. So it is like you can buy a simply a plot fine or you can buy an independent house you can go for buying flat in the apartment or you can buy an agricultural land these are the various options for you to buy a property suppose if there is a constraint there no you have to buy a property in such a manner that after you purchase immediately you have to live in that property you have to settle in that property then out of these four options, which options are suitable for this? Plot, you cannot go and you cannot stay in the empty land. Then independent house, yes, you can go for this. Flat, yes, you can also stay immediately and start your living. Agricultural land, you cannot go and stay there. So out of these four options, you got two options. So we call these as feasible solutions. What do we call? These are the feasible solutions. Then after that, there is one condition. You have to get maximum profit later from these properties. Then since you these are the two solutions then you will try to think okay from these two which property is going to give me more profit at the end that means later years. So independent house is going to give you the maximum profit when compared to the flat reasons you all know quite obvious independent house has got its own land. So definitely that land will have the value later after years also but this is a shared portion. So, the, so this way you are going to come out with one solution. So we say the one which you have selected finally is the optimal solution. So we say this solution is the optimal solution. This is just one example. One more example if you want. You are traveling. Okay. When you are traveling you have different means of transportation. Either you can go by walk or you can use a four wheeler or you can use a two wheeler or you can use a train or you can travel by flight. So you have so many options. But if the constraint is like you have to reach within 4 hours, then you will try to calculate to whichever place you are going, will these transportation means take more than 4 hours or less than 4 hours. Then out of these 5, you will identify, yes, train and flight, these two are the options which can take me to the destination in less than 4 hours. So we say these two are the feasible solutions. Now if there is a condition like you have to spend minimum, to reach to the destination that you will try to calculate the cost, the price or the fare to reach this. So definitely what train is cheaper than the flight. So you will select this option and this is called as the optimal solution. So hope you are getting the point for the greedy approach. The greedy approach is actually taking decisions at every stages. So in the initial stage it will try to select or it will try to take a decision which is more suitable at, at that particular point. The algorithms that makes use of this greedy approach, one is the Prim's algorithm, the other one is the Kruskal's algorithm, the third one is the Dijkstra's algorithm. Recently I just wanted to give you about the introduction to the greedy approach and also you should be knowing what do you mean by a spanning tree because Prim's and Kruskal's algorithm are used to determine what the minimum spanning tree. Suppose given is a graph, let me take one simple graph in order to explain to you. It has got four vertices. 
some weights are mentioned here this graph has got vertices and edges now spanning tree is what spanning tree is what it is a subgraph of graph g wherein the vertices in the spanning tree i can represent it as v dash and e dash here i am using v and e for the graph so for the spanning tree it is v dash and e dash so v dash is always equal to v in case of spanning tree that means whatever are the number of vertices in the graph the spanning tree will also have the same number of vertices whereas e dash that means the number of edges will be always equal to number of vertices minus 1 number of vertices in the original graph is how much 4 4 minus 1 so in this case the number of edges will be 3 when you want to denote the number of edges and number of vertices use this cardinality symbol okay you have to write like this e e indicates number of edges here v indicates number of vertices if you simply use e and v like this it represents the variables when you want to refer this as a count then you have to make use of this cardinality symbol so the resulting spanning tree from this graph so i can make the spanning tree as like this a b c and d yes this is my spanning tree because there is one edge less i have removed this edge out of four only three are appearing why only this edge i can have one more spanning tree i have removed this edge now so this three uh, this remaining three edges i am keeping it as it is why just these two i can have one more option one more spanning tree can be constructed here is there any possibility to construct one more yes there is one more spanning tree which can be constructed now i will remove this edge so i could make four spanning trees out of this any other spanning tree possible no not possible now i have a maximum of what four spanning trees coming out from this graph now if i have to find the minimum cost spanning tree these are the possible spanning trees but i want to find out what minimum spanning tree minimum spanning tree is the one which gives you the minimum cost after you add up the weights on all the edges of the spanning tree so if you want to get the minimum spanning tree out of all these spanning trees then simply add up the weights of the cost that are present on the edges of each of these trees 3 plus 4 plus 2 9 5 plus 3 plus 2 10 10 this is how much 9 10 11 so this is how much 9 10 11 12 you got like this the total cost as 9 10 11 12 the minimum is which one this 9 so you this becomes your minimum spanning tree in this case example so to determine the minimum spanning tree see we have done it for a small graph and we can have a complete overlook on this graph and you are able to calculate the minimum spanning tree but the algorithm doesn't know you should have some mechanism to find out the minimum spanning tree is there any mechanism yes there is a mechanism to find solution is the prims algorithm which is used to determine the minimum spanning tree the solution is kruskal's algorithm which is used to determine the minimum spanning tree so prims and kruskal's algorithm are used to determine the minimum spanning tree of a weighted connected graph how many spanning trees are possible for that you can use this formula n c r n c r is what n factorial r factorial into n minus of r factorial use this formula to get the number of spanning trees that are possible from a given graph in this case see n is how much the total number of edges in a given graph e fine and c how many you have to select you have to select the total number of vertices minus 1 for the spanning tree so in our example the total number of edges were how much in this case i'll write it here e c v minus 1 e is how much 4 c you are going to take 3 so 4 of 4 factorial divided by 3 factorial into 4 minus 3 factorial so how much it will be 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 divided by 3 into 2 into 1 into 1 factorial is 1 only so this this get cancel 4 divided by 1 is 4 so how many possible spanning trees are there 1 2 3 4 this way you can find out the number of possible spanning trees from a graph so here we have seen that for this kind of graph for this kind of graph you can see there are four possible ways of making the spanning tree suppose if you have a graph wherein there is an edge appearing here also then it is going to form here two cycles 
So how many possible spanning trees are possible in such cases? How to determine this? Always check the number of cycles that are formed here in the graph. In this example, there are two. Fine. So how will you calculate whatever formula you used here? The total, see for a spanning tree, what you want is the total number of edges. Out of those total number of edges, you need these many edges, V minus 1. Okay. So in this case, what has happened is there are cycles getting formed in the graph. So this formula minus of 2 you need to carry out. So this is what 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 edges are there. Out of that you require how many edges? Vertices are 4, 4 minus, uh, 4 minus 1, 3. Okay. V minus 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 minus 1, 3 and minus of 2. How many ways are possible now? Pi C3.